Hey there, what's up guys? Hope you're enjoying your Monday morning so far. Looking forward to chatting Atmos with you guys. So definitely type in the chat, um, say hey, and just to kick it off, I'm, I'm curious, like, let me know in the chat whether you purposely listen to records in Dolby Atmos. Like, do you purposely go and turn on that setting and choose that setting and listen? Let me know in the chat. Who's actually using Atmos? I was just, uh, right before this, I was just looking at the Apple playlists. They have like uh, different playlists or different genres of big songs, big artists that are mixing Atmos. And so I was just listening to some of that again. And I definitely have some thoughts that I'm going to share with you guys about just just what I'm hearing and what I think about Atmos. Um, but yeah, I'm really curious. So David says that he does. He does listen to, to Atmos. Uh, and also, guys, if you have... Um, if you have found a, a mix, a song, a record that you think has been done really, really well in Atmos, especially in the rock world, please let me know. Uh, cause I'm, well, I don't want to, I don't want to give away my thoughts <laughs> too soon. So David, Jeremiah, big fan, big fan of Atmos. Okay. Well, here's the thing guys. Um, let's, let's dive in and talk about Dolby Atmos. So we know that there's been a lot of hype around this right there's been different videos or things coming out we heard that apple is forcing uh artists to upload an atmos version of their song in order for them to be included in any editorial playlist which is kind of a big deal right those those playlists are really important for artists um and so that's kind of where the the thing started picking up momentum right is they, they kind of force it although i don't really know if that's fully fleshed out because I've certainly seen non-Atmos songs in a lot of playlists still. So maybe it hasn't been adopted uh, the way that uh, the, the way that they hoped. Um, so I've been asked by people, you know, in my paid community, the paid product, the pro production system, and also just on YouTube comments here, what about Atmos? What about Atmos? Do you think, do you think you should mix an Atmos? What do you think? And I've been kind of hanging back on this um, because whenever there's a lot of hype around something you know it's easy to get like caught up in the in the emotion like, you know you see someone who's really passionate about it and then it's like oh my gosh like, I've, I've got to get an atmos rig like what am i going to do my stereo mixing skills are worthless now you know and you start to freak out like that um so i wanted to just give it some time and just see how it continues to evolve and also just listen to it a lot myself and actually form a proper impression not be swept away in the hype and to just think about it first. And it, it does make sense to be thinking about this as a mixer. It's important that we be aware of what's going on and think about it. But the, the whole point is just that is just that is you actually should think about it and not just freak out about it. Right. So for me, when I'm thinking about Atmos, I'm asking myself like, well, number one, is music actually better in Atmos? Like, is it actually a better experience? Does it sound better? Does it feel better for the listener? Number one. Number two, is it really going to become the new standard? How likely is that going to, uh, how likely is that to happen? And then third, you know, what do, what do we do about it as producers and mixers? Should we invest in an Atmos rig for our room? Are we, are we going to be left behind? Are we going to be leaving money on the table without it? So that's kind of what I'm thinking through. Um, there is like one massive, ridiculous, glaring problem with this whole Atmos thing, which I'll get to in a second, which I surprisingly haven't heard that many people talk about. Um, let me catch up on the chat here. So some of you guys say it's hype. Uh, Fernando says spatial audio is just kind of weird. Okay. Many audio standards have come and gone. This is one of many. Okay. Last porcupine tree is great. Okay, reflector thinks it's not going to be the standard. Okay, that's, it's great to hear you guys' opinions on this. So I'll give you my impressions on first how it sounds, right? Like that's the first obvious question about this. So I found, you know, just again, listening on my phone on AirPods, I don't have a five or seven or 9.1 or 0.2 surround system here in my house. Um, so like many other people, I'm just hearing this Atmos thing uh, through my AirPods. So 
in general, when I'm when I am comparing the Atmos version to the stereo version, going back and forth, um, I'm finding the Atmos version is almost always a lot quieter, right? So there's more dynamic range. Um, that's the main thing I'm hearing, which is kind of nice in some ways. Like I think the extra dynamic range it does automatically make the sound feel a little more enveloping. Like it kind of sounds like it's more all around you. And because of the extra dynamic range, it's not super limited to the ceiling the whole time. You can have more low end and more punch. Like the the better Atmos mixes that I've heard, they all have like a, a nice big fatter low end. And then the stereo mix, the, the low end is decreased a little bit uh, in the good ones. Um, so that's the main difference I made. Like the, the Atmos mix does sound more... I don't want to say the word immersive because I don't think it is, but it just sounds like it's a little more all around you and the dynamic range is nice. Uh, comparing with the stereo mix, um, when you go back from the Atmos mix, the stereo mix often sounds like very in your face, like it's very loud, um, very mid-range heavy. It kind of sounds more slammed against your ears, whereas the Atmos mixes, there's often like a, a, so a softness to it, um, which is sometimes not in a bad way, softness, it, some, but sometimes is in a bad way um so to me it's it's weird like for all the hype i mean to me atmos just sounds like a stereo mix except a little bit more all around you you know rather than just feeling like it's coming straight at you from in front it sounds like a little more like it's around your head um however i found it's very very inconsistent across all the songs like just flipping through different playlists even the ones that apple has selected for their spatial audio playlists like the results are all over the place super inconsistent like sometimes the atmos mix had bigger bass and sometimes it was the opposite i was just listening to a post malone song on there and the stereo mix was like nice and big. The low end was really big. And then the Atmos mix, the low end was like way less. It was like, what's going on here? Like you have more room for low end here. So what's happening? Um, so sometimes you like, you'll hear a certain Atmos mix and it's like, oh, I, you know, these three things are better. But then you switch to a different song and then now those three things are worse in that one, right? So um, to be honest, guys, there were like, let's say out of 30 songs, I've, I've checked more than 30, but let's say out of 30, maybe 50 songs, in Atmos, there were like maybe two or three times out of out of 30 or more songs that I actually thought the Atmos mix sounded better. So that's a pretty low percentage, I think. You know, most of the time, like even if it even if it did sound good, and even if I thought it was, you know, maybe a better overall mix, like for the most part, after a few seconds, you just get used to it either way, right? Like maybe initially for the first second, you're like, oh, that's different. But then after five seconds go by and you're listening to the song, you're just in the song again. And you're not thinking about like whether it's Atmos or stereo, like it, it's, it doesn't matter. Um, so I haven't really experienced any wow factor with Atmos yet. There hasn't, there hasn't been a moment where I was like, oh wow, this is really cool or this is really good. And in fact, more often, like in a lot of cases, the Atmos mix is actually a lot worse. Uh, like very over-processed, sounds like it's very strangely encoded, kind of phasey. Um, kind of weird, like the Metallica one sounds like that. Um, man, it was, uh, what was I just listening to? I wrote it down here. The Foo Fighter, new Foo Fighters record. I just heard, wow, is it ever bad in the, in the, uh, Atmos version? Or I was also hearing a Nickelback song. It was like, it was brutal, absolutely brutal in the Atmos. Like this, the stereo is way better. So you know, it kind of sucks for anyone who's got Atmos enabled by default and they don't even know it. And they're just hearing like this mediocre version of the song when the stereo mix sounds so much better. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's my impression. Um, looking at your comments here, don't be scared because movies are done. Would it be safe to say that Atmos hype giving you FOMO? Yeah. So, so I'll let you guys know a little bit more about what I think about all that. Um, but yeah, sound-wise, those are my thoughts. Uh, it, to me, it kind of sounds like no one knows what to do with it yet. That's honestly what it sounds like to me. Um, it's kind of like an afterthought, even at even at high levels. Like I just mentioned some pretty big artists, Post Malone, Foo Fighters, Nickelback, um, Taylor Swift. I was listening to that one. Like most of them, it's either like not, it's either it's just like equally as good or worse, right? So even at these high levels, it's it sounds like an afterthought. And I think it's because it's being it's being pushed by Apple, right? This is not 
like the desire to mix in Atmos and put records out in Atmos and surround, this is not coming from uh, an artistic place, right? It's not coming out of an organic desire for from artists and from producers. And it's not artists coming to the table being like, man, I really want to do something different. I want to create this immersive experience. We're going to approach the whole thing like this. Um, we're really going to take a chance on this. Like that's not happening. It's not happening from the creator side. It's completely coming from a big tech company that's trying to impose rules, right? Apple's pushing it hard. I think they're trying to do it to gain an advantage over other streaming platforms to have like a superior sound. Um, questionable strategy there. Uh, but the thing with Apple is like they have a lot of power, right? They're basically forcing it, us to do it, right? And they're kind of used to being the bullies, you know? It's like, and they've succeeded a lot with it. Um, you know, the whole Steve Jobs thing of like, people don't know what they want, so I'm going to tell them what they want. Uh, that whole ethos has kind of persisted through throughout Apple's history. And I really love Apple. I mean, I definitely choose their products. I have a lot of their products. But in this case, I think they can get a little bit arrogant on this side of things where they just like think that they're just going to decide what the new standard in music is. And I don't blame them for having a little arrogance because they kind of did that with the iPod, right? They completely <laughs> revolutionized uh, the way we consume music and everything. And so they, they have done that before. And I think they're just hoping they can do it again, right? And so because it's being forced from the outside, we as producers are just kind of like, okay, well, here you go. I guess if you want the if you want the Atmos version, here you go, <laughs> you know? And so it doesn't sound like people are trying very hard. And I think that's a bad sign for the adoption of Atmos because if the artists and the creators and the producers, if they don't really care about it, like how is that gonna catch on, right? Because now they're not gonna provide, like the, the te technology's there, Dolby and Apple, they're, they're providing us the platform to like put the music through the technology. But if the creators don't care to actually try, then it's probably not gonna be a superior experience. And it sounds like to me, at least from what I've heard, no one's really come out with a gutsy record, right? Like you think with, with Atmos, you have the opportunity to do some pretty crazy panning stuff, right? Really kind of new, unique, spatial effects. And that's not what people are doing, right? Like if you listen to Atmos, Atmos mixes, basically what everyone's doing is they're just taking a stereo mix and they're getting it ported over to Atmos without really any significant changes to the mix at all right? That's what it sounds like. And ma honestly, maybe that's how it should be. I mean, we as humans, think about this. As humans, we don't experience live music like that, right? We, we never have. Even going back, even if you lived in the days of like Mozart or Beethoven, like you would be sitting in the audience and then the orchestra would be in front of you and you, the sound would be coming like this, right? So I don't know what you would do in like a, a, a rock record. Like it would probably be weird if you had like the drums here and like a tambourine way back here up up top and then you know a lead guitar like way over here like it would be maybe disorienting i haven't heard anything like that though i don't i don't know what that experience is like but it makes sense that we would just mostly have a stereo ish mix with a little bit more atmosphere a little bit more ambient so maybe it feels a little more like we're actually in a room with a band in a 360 degree environment maybe that makes it more pleasing that kind of makes sense right but yeah, if you've if you've got the tambourine in the bottom or the top right back corner and a lead guitar up in the top left corner, like um, I don't know, maybe it's cool, maybe it'd be creative, or maybe it would just be weird and annoying and unpleasant because that's not how we people, real people, experience other people playing music. That's just not what. That's not what we're used to, right? It'd be very weird if you went to a concert and the guitar player was like way over here. And then the drums were like way back there. Like, you know what I'm getting at? It, it makes sense for movies, right? It makes total sense because there's a visual component. You can see like a car driving across the screen or, or like coming from behind you. You can make it sound like it's coming from behind you and then comes across the screen and, you know, you can pan it to follow the visual and, and it creates an immersive effect. But I'm just struggling to see, I'm struggling to see why, like, why should we care about that for music? I don't know. I don't, I don't see how it's a game changer so far. It's not. Um, so that's what I think of how it sounds. I think, I think in course of time, if it persists that we have to, uh, submit Dolby, uh, Atmos mixes, it'll probably get better, right? Like we need some time to figure this out. People need time to figure out how to maximize this. Um, there needs to be some really good records done that are successful that kind of become a benchmark, right? Um, that, that's where I think we're at. Um, 
uh, from the consumer point of view, I don't think anyone knows or cares. Like <laughs> people who are not mixers, producers, or artists, like they probably don't even know whether they have Atmos enabled on their on their phone or not. They probably have no clue at all, and they probably have no clue how to change it, even if it was right. So, if Apple or if Spotify forces Atmos to be the new normal, I think it's just because of their power, and it's a marketing thing. Uh, it's not because it's superior, at least so far, right? And if that's the case, I mean, so be it. I mean, same thing happened with MP3s, right? Technically worse quality than a CD, but because it was so much more convenient, people people were okay with it. People adopted it. So I, as long as it's not worse, you know, as long as it's as good as stereo or maybe it's 10% better, I think the average person, they won't have a clue that anything's changed and they'll just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Just shrug your shoulders and move on, right? Um, now, I hope that's not the case because it's a lot of extra work and thinking for us on our end for something that the consumer doesn't even care about, um, right? But yeah, I mean, for consumers to adopt new technology, it's got to be a better experience or it's got to be significantly more convenient, right? I talked about that. It's like, think about tape cassettes back in the day, right? The quality was definitely worse, but being able to carry around your, your tape, that's an improvement in convenience. So people like it. Same with MP3s versus CDs, right? Um I just don't think Atmos so far, I don't think it's a significantly better experience. In fact, for most of the examples I've heard recently, it's it's kind of worse. Uh, and it's also not any more convenient, which brings me to the big glaring problem. And I think a few of you guys um, have typed this in the chat, which I'm glad you guys are actually thinking about this because wherever I've seen a lot of hype around Atmos, um, it's, it's been people maybe in a really nice studio that has the full nine speakers around them and they're like, wow, this is great. It sounds so cool. Um, but if you just stop and think about this for a second, there's a huge problem. Like there's, there's no chance that that is catching on. There's no chance. Like who is going to put nine speakers in a room in their house and then sit down and listen to music there? It's like expensive. It's impractical. And plus people don't, People don't care. Like people don't consume music like that. We don't go. How many of you guys go and like just sit in a room and listen to a song, right? You usually have it on in your in your earpods as you're or in your car or as you're walking around. Like we consume music more like on the go these days. We don't. I mean, you guys are musicians, producers, so maybe you guys are more likely to just sit and listen. But ninety nine percent of people, that's not how we consume music, right? So as far as I'm concerned, even if it becomes the new standard format, like no one is going to have a real life Atmos rig, like nobody, <laughs> right? So as far as I'm concerned, I really don't care what it sounds like in a real life Atmos environment. Like, you know, the, on the only way this thing goes forward is with headphones, basically the emulation, the effect, the simulation on headphones, right? So I really hope that no one here went and bought an Atmos rig already before thinking at least about that, right? So what should we do as mixers, right? What does this what does this mean for us, right? Well, I just said, you know, basically nobody or maybe a f one fraction of 1% of music listeners will ever have a real life Atmos setup to listen on. They're only hearing it on headphones. So to me, it seems like kind of a big waste of effort and money to go and get a full Atmos mixing setup, right? Like if we look at the cost here, let me just share my screen for a second. So even on the low end, like the Kali audio or a focal setup of monitors for, this isn't even for a 9.1 or 9.2 or whatever. This is just for seven, seven grand, right? And then it goes way up, you know, there's 74 grand, 50 grand, 30 grand, 15 grand. Um, so let's say sticking on the low end, let's say seven grand for that, for the speakers. And then you've got to have uh, an interface that has enough outputs, right? So something like the Apollo 16 or the Apogee Symphony, you know, that's another four to five grand. So let's call it conservatively 12K. All right, let's say conservatively to get a real Atmos mixing setup, it's 12K. It might be a little bit more. You got all your your cabling. You got to get the speakers mounted up there nicely, all that stuff. Maybe you need extra acoustic treatment because of that. Um, let's say 12,000 to get that set up. Well, on the economics of it, does this make sense, right? Well, from a quick search and just from what I've heard for, uh, so far from even artists who have um, th been thinking about sending out their mixes or even mixes that I've done to get ported over to Atmos. I think it's about 150 bucks per song on average to take a stereo mix and then 
get it ready for Atmos, right? So let's say you invested 12K to get an Atmos rig. You'd have to do 80 mixes in Atmos at 150 per to recoup that money. And actually that's not too bad, right? That's not too bad. You could actually recoup that in like a year. That's only like six, six, seven songs a month. So you could recoup that pretty quickly as long as you're fairly active in the studio. Um, so financially, you know, maybe not a horrible investment. However, the question is just why? <laughs> like, why would you do that? Right? Because no one's going to be listening like that. Like for me, I, I mix on NS10s, no subwoofer. In fact, the last mix I did uh, last month, I, I literally mixed on my AirPods for like th at least 40% of the mix. And it turned out great. It was, it was so easy to, you know, use my reference tracks and make good decisions and get stuff translating uh, everywhere. And so I'm, I'm really a firm believer that you don't need to be mixing in a pristine environment with the most expensive speakers. I think you need to be mixing on speakers that don't artificially hype up your mix, right? So to me, like the idea of sitting in this surround sound, perfectly set up uh, studio environment and doing Atmos mixes, to me, it's like, you're literally like making decisions in an environment that no, like almost zero other people are ever going to hear it like that. All right. So I'm not sure why you would do that. <laughs> why would you mix in an environment or, or in a situation that no one else is ever going to hear? Right. So to me, at least now, if you're going to try and do this, just do it on headphones. All right. Now I'll sing, I'm going to say a caveat. I have not done this personally. I have not tried, you know, to set up the whole Atmos thing and the encoder and whatever it is. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried doing it personally. Okay. But my guess is that eventually people are going to be doing Atmos mixes just as well, or probably better on headphones than anyone's doing on big fancy setups. Why? Because they're mixing for the actual consumer experience. That's what other people are hearing. They're hearing it on headphones, right? So to me, that's, that's the way forward. That makes sense. If you're going to start kind of getting into this Atmos world, don't drop 12 grand on and, and renovate your room. Okay. I think it's complete, uh, completely way too early to do that. Um, just at least start by doing it on headphones and see what kind of results you could get. Um, going further than that, um, should you do it at all? Right? Like, should you even pursue this at all? Right? Well, personally, I'm not, um, I'm not going to try and get my feet wet or, or get familiar with mixing in Atmos. Um, I don't really see that much upside for myself in my situation. Um, to me, I'd rather just find a good Atmos mixer, uh, at least maybe listen to some of the Atmos mixes that they've done if I'm working with an artist and try to choose someone that I think has done a good job uh, and send it to them, right? And just, you know, pay the extra money for that. Um, now, if you're someone who does want to get into it, if you're kind of interested in, in being on the the forward edge of this, again, I don't, I don't even know if it's going to stay forward edge. Like, I think there's going to be people who really dive in and make a huge commitment. Like, I think this is going to be the thing. And then if it's not the thing, well, you've wasted a lot of time and money. Um, if you do want to get into it, um, there's probably is some money to be made. You know, like I said, there's, there's probably not a lot of people who are experienced to, to mix in Atmos and do it effectively, even on headphones. Um, so if you can become one of those people, one of those few people, you can, you could probably make some money off this, right? Uh, just from a business standpoint. So, you know, that's maybe not a bad thing. Like if artists want to have the Atmos mix so that they have a better chance of getting playlisted, that's very, that's a very legit concern from the industry side, from the label side, the artist side. So if you want to be able to provide that service, um, it makes sense. Pe people need that now, apparently. Right. Um, so let me know what your guys, uh, prediction is, um, checking in the chat here. So a lot of you guys, it looks like agree that you can just do it in headphones. Yeah. I know they're talking about car systems as well. Um, but even so, like, I don't know, every car is so different the way it sounds it like you still don't have a consistent experience. Uh, someone says it's dangerous to ignore it. Just be open. Yeah, I'm definitely open. I'm definitely open to it. I could be wrong about some of this stuff, but this is just where I think it is right now. Um, so I'm definitely not ignoring it. I'm thinking about it, talking about it with you guys. Um, yeah, but do you think, what do you predict? Is this going to be the new standard? Are you guys kind of more on my side right now, or are you, uh, are you thinking this thing's going to catch on? So Kevin's saying, I think people who want to branch out and do video games, VR, 
There's likely money to be made there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Video games, anything with a visual component with it makes total sense for sure. It makes sense, uh, Andreas, for recreating a concert experience. Yeah, I see that. Um, but still, you'd have like the music sounding more like what we're used to hearing, right? But yeah, maybe you have more ambience and crowd noise that makes it feel like you're in a space. That makes sense. Yep. There's a few guys saying you, they don't think it will catch on. Fernando, not anytime soon, but who knows? It'd be enormous only for movies. Ecosystem is different from 5.1, so it might stick. Okay, so we got, we do have a few, a uh, little bit of a mix of opinions here for sure. Yeah, uh, Pete's saying there might be some immersive music, etc. and the metaverse if that ever takes off. Yeah, we'll see, right? So there's definitely avenues where this could do, but in terms of like listening to a rock band or, or pop music, remains it remains to be seen, right? Um, but yeah, I do, I do think at this point, it's very underwhelming. Um, I'd like to hear a good one, but a lot of them are really bad. You know, it's funny, actually, uh, some of the, if you go on your iPhone, if you use Apple Music, it allows, it gives you the option to, they'll automatically spatialize it, right? So even if, even if the record hasn't provided an Atmos format for it, you can hit spatialize audio. And I'm not kidding you, like half the time, that like automatically spatialized audio from the iPhone sounds better than like the actual Dolby uh, Atmos mix that was provided, right? So I think we're a far way away from people having figured this out yet. Um, and I think if it does catch on, if it does catch on a couple more years and this whole thing will be integrated into your DAWs and you know, you'll be able to do it on your headphones just fine and it won't be a problem. It won't be that complicated, I don't think. Um, and, and honestly, if it catches on, maybe, maybe we do kind of win in the end. Like if I'm on the optimistic side, if I put on that hat for a second, um, you know, maybe people get used to this. Um, people start trying some different things. They figure out how to make stuff sounds better, sound better. Some standards get established. Um, and maybe we get more dynamics, right? Like that's, that's the main thing I heard is that it's just not squashed like modern stereo mixes. There's a lot more dynamics. So maybe that ends up being a good thing for us and for listeners, um, that's kind of the one thing that I liked about it when it was done well, um, but often it was not done well. Um, but honestly, guys, yeah, I am open. I'm unbiased. I don't really care either way. I'm not I'm not on the side of like, I'm not going to try and stop it from happening. Um, I'm just interested to see where it goes, right? And maybe I'll be proven wrong. Like maybe in five years, we'll be mixing the lead guitar back in the top left and, you know, the tambourine's going to be up in the front, right? And then we're going to have a background vocal in the middle side. I don't know, like... Who knows what's gonna happen, right? Um, but hope you guys uh, at least have some food for thought on this, um, and maybe just be careful before you give in to all the hype and you know go and blow twelve grand on a on an Atmos system. Just start on headphones, I think, if you're gonna go down that road. And uh, let's keep an eye on it. Maybe I'll be back on the channel again with uh, some more opinions after listening to some newer records. All right, guys. So. Thanks for tuning in here. Um, and definitely if you're watching the replay of this, type in the comment too what you what you think about this and what you predict. I'm really interested to see just what the general vibe out there with you guys is. So thanks for watching either way. Take care, guys.